Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. You know they're not making more time and so spending your precious time wasting it, troubleshooting a Zigbee network in your home is something that I don't want you to do. So I'm going to give you five different tips or tricks that will get you set up again with your Zigbee devices, especially if you're having random device connections. Those can be the toughest to troubleshoot and the toughest to figure out. So let's get going. Now, of course, this is what we're all about here at Automate Your Life. We want to save you time. We want to save you money so that you can utilize those things with your friends and family in a much better way. Now, today, I'm going to show you things with Samsung Smart Things, but this will apply to really any Zigbee capable hub and Zigbee devices. All of these steps and capabilities will be there for you. So we're gonna go through a couple of basics and then I'll get into those tips and tricks as we get out of those basics. Now, this is a Zigbee motion sensor from Samsung Smart Things. It is a battery powered sensor. And this is a Zigbee Smart Outlet from Samsung Smart Things as well. This is the version two uh, version of Samsung Smart Things devices, and this is actually a version three motion sensor. Now, this is a version two hub. There's V1, V2, and V3 now, and there are some small differences that we'll talk about as we go. All three of these devices can communicate through Zigbee. The Smart Things hub also has a Z Wave transmitter, or transceiver rather, on board. I was getting in trouble when I say that wrong here on the channel, but the, it has the capability of communicating with Z-Wave. So uh, you have both of those protocols on this device and as we get into V3, we'll talk about a third protocol that's there as well. The first thing to talk about is the placement of your hub. So if you're having certain devices in your home disconnect, well, you have some options here that you can actually take in terms of orientation of your hub. Now, what's interesting in I'll leave some of these pictures on screen for a few seconds as I talk through uh, different components as we go here in the video but the Z-Wave radio actually points out from the back or from the front so here's the back of the V2 hub and then coming out the front is the Z-Wave so that's the direction that Z-Wave is strongest in so you want to point that towards the Z-Wave devices in your home in order to get the best signal. Now the other thing is the Zigbee repeater here, or the Zigbee radio is out this way. So you will see diagrams out there and there's some misinformation out on the internet right now actually, but that's where the Zigbee is. So it's coming out this side, so if you're facing the device, you guys are facing it, it's on the left side and it's coming out the left. So again, that's where the radio signal will be strongest in that direction. Now, if you're working with a V3 hub, and I told you we would talk a little bit about that, the same thing is true. Z-Wave, Zigbee, and actually a thread radio is out the back or a thread antenna is out the back here. They actually have two wireless antennas that come out this side on the V3 hub. So little bit of difference there and a lot of different things to think about right then and there. Your orientation of this hub in your home can be a big differentiator in getting all of those Zigbee products. So we talked about orientation, but where do you place the hub in your in your home in order to get maximum uh, distance here in your Zigbee network? Well, obviously if you have Z-Wave devices, you wanna think about that as well, but I think if you're kinda of pointing this direction into the middle of your home, and you'll have to look this up for your own uh, Zigbee hub that you have in your home, but if you're kind of pointing it in that direction into the middle of your home, you're going to have the best opportunity. The other thing that you're going to want to think about is what you're passing through. And what I'll say in general is heavier materials make it make it more difficult. Thicker walls, heavier materials that it's passing through make it more difficult and shorten the distance that you're going to get out of that Zigbee hub. Now, Samsung SmartThings actually doesn't have the ability to 
create a visual map for you and that's something you might want to do if you have a visual map or you just draw something out on your home in your you know in your home here draw something out for yourself and mark where your Zigbee devices are and this will probably be very helpful for you just to have a visual diagram. Some hubs come with the visual capability of showing you how your mesh network is being designed. Now, what do I mean by mesh network and what are we talking about in terms of the te different types of devices in that mesh network? I have a much more thorough video that I'll make sure I leave down in the description below. You'll be able to look at a lot more details about Zigbee and then also a second video I have that talks about Zigbee and Wi-Fi interference and we are going to talk about that a little bit here but in general a mesh network means that signals are routed through certain devices so we have a sensor here and I talked about that a little bit at the start but it is just an end device this device it is the ultimate end of the mesh network but over here this Samsung smart things Zigbee outlet the smart outlet that they sell and other smart outlets and other devices that are connected to power and I'll leave a list of some other repeaters that's what this is it's a repeater and I'll leave some of those other devices again down in the description below you can go and look at a couple of different repeaters for your system different repeaters work with different systems but in general a Zigbee repeater will work with all so there will be some restrictions so you have to kind of look that up as well but this device will actually repeat so if I'm talking about designing my own Zigbee network here's what I'm looking at in terms of distance and in terms of how the signal can route so it could if I didn't have this Zigbee outlet here the signals could travel all the way to this motion sensor but if it's kind of at the end of your range of your Zigbee hub and we'll talk about how to figure that out in a minute but if it's kind of at the end of that range then placing one of these in the middle just plugged into a wall socket will then cause the signal to repeat and be stronger as it reaches this device and you will have less random disconnections here so this is one of the ways that you can really quickly mitigate and this is about a thirty dollar addition here in canada they're 20 us usually and you can find them on sale for even less you can go pick one up at Lowe's. so a zigbee repeater is a major component to lessening these random disconnections we talked a little bit about wi-fi and the impact that it can have on your zigbee network now i again i have that more detailed video about managing those networks but here's what i'll tell you this device if it's sitting next to a strong wireless device a strong wi-fi device then that can actually cause interference your wi-fi network in general in your home at that 2.4 gigahertz can cause interference devices next to this like cell phones can cause interference especially if they're again connected to wi-fi you can cause interference from a number of different sources and so if if you literally have this going on next to your zigbee hub just do that give it some space move it move either this hub or the other wireless device give it some space same thing with your end devices or your repeaters don't leave your wi-fi devices at that 2.4 gigahertz don't leave them next to any of these devices and if you do just understand that it could be a source of random disconnections because it will not always interfere necessarily it will likely be a random disconnection so Wi-Fi can be one of your biggest sources in terms of that Wi-Fi interference there is something else that you can do in your home and then you might actually have to speak with your neighbor so again I have that video that is much more detailed about this topic and gives you a lot of basics but the Samsung SmartThings hub here 
its Zigbee channel is 24. So that's basically the end of the spectrum. And so when you have a Wi-Fi router utilizing 2.4 gigahertz, you can actually choose some channels that will put your Wi-Fi out of the way of interfering with these Zigbee devices. So you will have to look this up for your own hub, whatever your hub is, but on a Samsung SmartThings, the fact that we're on channel 24 leaves channels one through six on your router for, for again, that 2.4 gigahertz radio leaves it open. But the biggest problem is likely to be your neighbors have Wi-Fi, they may also have Zigbee, and all of those can then interfere. So you're going to need to do some coordination. And again, I would, I would say that if you do think you're having this problem, you should go watch that other video that I have that will really detail it for you really well and help you coordinate between your neighbors and yourselves. And you really just have to have a discussion and make sure that everyone's kind of playing nice in the sandbox, so to speak. One other quick thing you can do with your wireless equipment in your home is a lot of devices now can be moved to a five gigahertz radio. So, you know, my cell phone here, it can be moved to five gigahertz. Almost all of my smart products that I have purchased recently that are Wi-Fi capable, they can do both. So when you're buying quality wireless products, you can move them to the five gigahertz band and that will get a lot out of the way of your Zigbee network and really in general, free up speed as well on your router. So there you go guys, just to re recap here, these are repeaters that can help you. Anything powered will normally be a Zigbee repeater if it's a Zigbee device, but these little, wire, or these little outlets they're kind of the perfect device. I find them cheap, simple, and I have other uses for them. So they're very good. The other things you can do is look at orientation, look at what you're going through and maybe place this repeater a little closer to your hub if you have kind of a, a thicker walled room that you're trying to get out of really this can be very impactful. The other things you can do is move your Wi-Fi stuff out of the way. You can either move it to that five gigahertz channel or you can also move your channels on the 2.4 gigahertz radio that you have and talk to your neighbors about that. So hopefully this has helped you troubleshoot and get rid of these random disconnections, these little things that are causing you headaches in your home and honestly, giving you back some time in your life because that's what I'm all about here on Automate Your Life. So thanks for watching everyone. Of course, there are plenty of links down below and we'll see you next time.